Hey everybody, it's Trav. Where are you? Da -da -da, da -da -da. So this is day six, and uh, let's get it underway. Hey everybody, it's Trav from Crew Gear, Industrial Dream Supply, coming back at you once again. Uh, this is day six of prototyping the DESA Part 1 Hero 2.0 Ultimate Edition Type M Copper Pipe Razor Club. And if anybody uh, is catching this video as their first, there are four other installments or five on my channel, uh, prototyping days one through, or actually days three through five. Uh, that'll catch you up to speed, but uh, basically, in a nutshell, um, decided to recreate or replicate the original Hero Glove in the authentic methods that it was done for the film, or as close as humanly possible uh, to that effect. So my hashtag, authentic method or die, you've seen by now, that's the um, going rate of the day or evening. So here we are in the Crew Gear Labs, the brand new Crew Gear Labs, courtesy of my better half, EKL the incomparable Aaron Kennedy Lunsford, uh, who uh, was kind enough to devote this side of the room to yours truly and his creepy endeavors. And the creepy endeavors are as follows. Uh, we are, and we being me, are attempting to do what uh, we've never done before, which is to construct the part one hero glove as it looked in the original production using the original authentic materials or as close as humanly possible uh, to them. So that goes to the core materials, type M copper pipe, plumber's pipe, uh, rather than sheet metal. The sequel gloves were built with sheet metal uh, from parts three all the way up through FVJ. And uh, the blades now being blade replicas created by a brilliant craftsman which will be going on the gloves. Dead-on replica for the original tomato knives, the Case X uh, P210s, vintage tomato knives, so we've got that. And uh, the weathering and the other procedures, obviously if you're watching my videos, you know I'm playing around with those. And this is a big process, it's a huge learning curve. And there's a lot that I'm not telling you. So while you, meet, you know, see me doing things and me talking about things, it doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't something else going on behind the scenes. Um, and there is, and there are, always because this is a huge investment for me. Uh, I decided to do this because of two reasons. One, this has been in my life longer than I can even remember it not being in my life anymore. And two, there are guys that I owe gloves to, a handful are left after I had a lot of personal problems in my life, who've really stuck by me and who I owe dearly, not just hardware. And I wanted to be in a position where I had some level of stability to give them what I always wanted to create from day one, which was something perfect, which was something that when looked at, you felt like you were part of the movie and it had come off the screen and landed in your lap. And humbly, I say at this point, I have the wherewithal and I have the, the know-how, the knack and the resources to actually pull it off, at, at least at this point in time. For my own personal judgment, how, how, how I judge it, how I see it. This is my opinion. And if these guys believe it and they, and they get it and they feel like they're literally on the receiving end of, of something that was ripped off this guy's hand and thrown in that boiler for all those years, then groovy. It's all I ever wanted. And yes, some of them are friends uh, through this process. And yeah, I owe them on that level too. I can't do this for all of the remaining guys, and there's a handful of them. You know, those gloves are already underway. They're still the 2.0s. They're just not the ultimate edition. They're still, you know, my gloves. They still have my hand-done knives on them. They're gorgeous. Uh, but the 2.0 ultimate editions, it's also a huge monetary investment, certainly for the copper pipe and, and the blades, but all, for other reasons I can't get into right now, to make these gloves happen, it's a huge loss. It's a huge hit. Um, so I am losing money by doing this. Trust me on this. And that's fine. It's a labor of love and, and it's an obsession. 
and these guys will appreciate it. Uh, so I had enough supplies, I had enough with this, this run to do two things, to prototype the glove fully, and then to build three of them that will go into the hands of a few of the guys. And these guys are not better than anybody else. It just so happens they've waited the longest. And, you know, over the years, um, I've made a lot of gloves. A couple guys I've refunded. And still yet another couple guys, you know, have decided to wait. And they're now finally going to get what they waited for. So, uh, you know, and the couple that I'm doing that are just 2.0s, they're beautiful, they're gorgeous, and they're still my gloves, and you'll be happy with them too. And I'm sorry I couldn't do an Ultimate Edition for everybody uh, on that very, very short list. And um, thank you, uh, thank you for even considering being interested in getting one. Um, I get a lot of requests to this day for gloves, uh, not daily, but at least weekly. And I'm always saying no, or I'm saying, I don't know where I'm going to be five years from now. No, I don't. Right now, it's about perfecting the craft. That's the best answer I can give you. And what's going to happen now is I'm going to take some time. I've done my test work all this week to where I'm competent enough to go ahead and give it a full armature test run of a full prototype, top to tail. I'm going to make it as close as humanly possible to perfect for my needs as to how it will look for the actual three production run that's going to go out with these three guys. And um, if that goes well, uh, there may be some dings. It's a prototype. Remember, this week is the final prototype, uh, or at least the next. I, I'd like to see this finished in the next two weeks where I can actually shoot it and show it off. And uh, I'll know very quickly if this is going to work. And if it doesn't, I'll let you know. But I think it's going to. I think it's going to be a success. Fingers crossed. Uh, and after, uh, after this production run is done and the, uh, the other couple of gloves that I actually have pretty much cut and ready to go are ready and gone. Uh, and I think I have one other guy I've got to uh, finish off a refund for. Um, at that point, the dust will settle. We'll see where I go with this whole lineage and this whole legacy uh, of, of my journey, which has been 25 years. So uh, never count me out, but I can't guarantee anything ever. Uh, right now, I'm just perfecting the craft. I have a lot of supplies that I bought. I'm going to build some gloves. I'd like to own one for myself, other than the Becker clone on my wall. Uh, maybe I'll do a display thing. Maybe I'll become uh, an instructor. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll have my TV show back and do it fully. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not going away. I am retired. I'm not going to go into a full glove production and, and sell these things and, and, and you know, and, and uh, uh, you know, pump them out on an assembly line. I'm just not going to do it because obviously it's not in my blood. What's in my blood is to create really great art for myself and to share it with people who have my love for this film series, for the hardware that captivated us, and that is the journey I'm going on right now. And it just so happens that a few of you guys are going to get the, the, the fruits of that labor. So onward and upward, let's uh, start cutting some pipe, and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so I've gone ahead and made three uh, segment differentials on my Type M copper pipe. And uh, one for the middle, one for the ring, I've already cut the middle, and one for the pinky. And although you're going to be Whoever's following me, I'll just say me. Although I'm going to be cutting uh, this by hand, that is, the actual templates themselves, I like to do this with a bit of care with the pipe cutter as not to depress the metal totally. Because you can warp it. Copper, again, is very, very malleable just by its nature. So this is a really interesting new process for me, using the authentic materials and the authentic methodologies as best I know to get this done. And if you've never cut copper pipe before, uh, it's basically a tighten and twist methodology with the pipe cutter, which I got at the same place uh, I got the pipe. And you get a feel for it as to when it's going to give. But you can see I'm just basically turning the uh, pipe itself, doing a bit of tightening, just ever so carefully. And you start getting a feel for where it's going to give. It's just about there. Probably the next type swipe will do it. Yeah. 
So this should be it. We're close to it. Yeah, this is good. There we go. And uh, there we go. Nice cleanly cut pipe. We're going to cut the rest of this stuff and start prepping it for the split seam, as I have begun to call it, which is where we split it down the middle to flatten out to be able to get these guys. See you in a minute. I've got my, uh, and again, I've already got my index piece cut and drilled uh, of the Type M pipe, and I've got my 2.0 Ultimate Edition build pieces out for a visual reference, uh, at least a psychological visual reference, uh, next to their soon-to-be counterparts, and I've got a lighter in my hand. Let's just get to work, and uh, what we're going to be doing is using uh, a standard propane torch and heating up these pipe segments so that we can work with them because what I've discovered and uh, what I have been told and sure enough it was the truth this stuff is impossible to work with unless you give it some heat and you're gonna start breaking down the bonds of the uh, molecular structure of the alloy and it will harden up what I've for me, what I've discovered is once I heat this stuff up, it gives me a kind of a time frame, a window, if you will, of how long I have to actually work with it before it becomes somewhat unworkable uh, for my taste. So I like a lot of control. So we're going to go ahead and heat these guys up and uh, split them down the middle and start prepping them into uh, flat sheets to then cut out the primary templates and uh, get things rocking. I'm going to very carefully take the M which is middle, uh, and if you look at pipe, if you look at type M copper pipe, I'm just trying to find the lens on this thing, it's got a red uh, uh, marking across the spine. Type K, type L have different colors, green and blue I think they are, but this has got red. Now I'm actually going to be using the inside of the pipe. It doesn't matter what the outside is doing. Uh, and there's a reason for that, but I won't get into it at this juncture. So what happens on the outside is inconsequential, but I like to get the heat concentrated right here on the interior of the pipe, which you'll see in a second, so that I don't have any red to deal with for the finished piece, because it is on both sides and it's pretty permanent, as far as I understand and as far as my experience thus far. So, here we go, and we're going to pop this sucker on, and let it heat up until it turns a really nice healthy black. And it takes a little under a minute and you'll start to see it turning, getting a little darker. And we're just gonna wait for the process to take shape. There we go. It's very much like the coloring process of my original 2.0s. If you caught my weathering procedure video, it's very much the same. Let that take all the way down. Give it a little bit more gas. Just to get real cooked. Alright, and that's about it. Nice and black, and we're going to put it in the dip, which is basically just water. This is the color you should have. And give it a second because this really, really gets hot. It'll be warm for a while, actually. And you might say, wow, that's really great. Look at the colors and all that. Yeah, it is. It's absolutely really great. Um, but not how we're going to color it. This is all going to go bye-bye. What we want to do is split this now down the middle, along the red, and flatten it out. I want to show you something. This is the, uh, the piece I just cut out. And it's been flattened. And this is the interior where the heat source was. This is the exterior and I went ahead and I hit it with just a little bit of cleaning agent because I want to show you something. Do you see where it says Cero Type M? That's what that print says right there and it's subtly raised print right about the middle of the seam. So it tells you two things. One, it's Type M pipe and two, you can't use this section. Um, because it's dead center in the middle of the pipe. That's why we have to use the underside. All right, obviously I'm not going to give you a total dead-on view, but you can see that I've cut out those three pieces, flattened out the pipe, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, again, up in the right-hand corner, the index has already been cut and drilled, so it's primed. I have just my first test tip up there 
which was uh, really no big deal to show. But I gave the interior, that is the inside of the pipe that we heated, I gave that the uh, designation as the surface. So we've reversed it. I unfolded it like so. I flattened it out. And then the interior became the topical surface of what will be the exterior of the stall segments. And I went ahead, I did not sand these, I just gave them a little bit of a cleaning with a cleaning agent, so it's just the raw metal, because the weathering process will take place at a later date. And we are ready to go on shaping these into their appropriate parts. We'll catch you then. All right, so here we are making some steady progress, and uh, I'll show you a little something. I'm not going to do this totally, obviously, but here, uh, here you go. My DESA Master Middle Template is an exact match for the Child Template. Type M Pipe. We're just going to continue on down the line, but I think I'm going to take a break and start doing some shaping, because I'm in that kind of mood. Now to stage one of the curving procedure using the large diameter, looks like uh, about a two inch pipe. Never quite figured out how much that was, I'll tell you right now. It is, yeah, just under a two inch pipe for the curving procedure on procedure one. And we're starting to, uh, at least psychologically, get ready to start putting these in, uh, in shape here. So. Stage one, stage two coming up. Just to show you, there is no toothing anywhere to be found. Every edge has been sanded with a fine grit stone as we do the process from cutting to shaping. And no hard edged tools have hit this. It's all been soft tool. Soft tool either taped off or using my new rubber mallet. Stage two of the shaping has been completed. Subtly different, but we're starting to pick up the side beams, which is what I kind of christened these guys in the community when we're talking about how the light reflects off the sides of the stalls. And these reflections become very, very important, and they aren't completely rounded off by the time we get to uh, the final elements of this stuff. Like anything, it's all about subtle detail with these gloves. And uh, the side beams do have a bit of a sharpness to them that is very important, be very important later on in the process, on the stage three. I think this is a really good point to take a pause. Now, obviously, uh, we're looking at a couple of things right now. I've gone ahead and placed my master build index stall that I match all of my child gloves to. This is the master build glove from the master template over here. And I've placed it next to the final three stage the third stage pipe shape for the child index stall for what will be the prototype DESA 2.0 Ultimate Edition Part 1 Hero. And this up here is the stage 2 pipe and the stage 3 pipe. And this is the pipe I just spent the last 45 minutes. I'm taking my time on this, hammering this out. This is still, this uh, middle stall is still at stage 2, and you can see it is coming along, but this is the final stage before the real shaping begins on the index. And this is generally how I start attacking the gloves. And you can see here the side beams that will come more to fruition on the child glove once the contouring begins. But this is a really good point to stop because there are a couple things I want to spend some time on. And again, this isn't going to be a terribly long process like creating the DESA, the original documentary that I did. This is the prototyping, but I want to explain a couple things to some of the glove guys who are following me along. And I, you know, I know there are a couple of you, 
who I speak to. And you might find this interesting. And anybody waiting for their copy of this might find this interesting as well. So let's take it for what it's worth. You will notice a lot of differences in silhouette. Let's talk about the tip. This is the very first test tip that I did for the index. If you guys remember a couple days ago, I did that. Well, it doesn't fit quite properly for a number of reasons. One, it's not completely shaped in its totality because it was my test piece and it was shaped against the Becker clone, which is over here, which is slightly less accurate in terms of the template cut than the DESA 2.0 Ultimate Edition, but the shaping is primarily the same. Unfortunately, when you shape it out, because you don't have the same cut template, you have less surface volume to work with, the contours tend to look, upon close examination, a little less accurate than I would like. But for the purposes and intent of a display and a demo, I think it's good, and I wanted to see how it would start shaping up, so I popped it underneath very carefully, I actually snapped it in because this is in full pipe shape. Uh, it hasn't been pushed out or tweaked. And again, this is what I do. We want to go back to our original pipe shape, we being me, uh, that we first started with, that we first started with, and then pretend as if we had never flattened it out and go from there and create all the contours that we see on this. And I want to start examining what contours they are versus the two pieces so you can see the kind of work that actually goes into this. And this is a really good place to stop. Obviously, I have one of my uh, P210 replica, my master temp uh, braced on here just for effect. Obviously, it doesn't fit because there's a lot of contouring work that goes into the hilt on these things. But again, it's a nice visual representation of the real deal for the first time on my table, on a Krugier table and uh, it is quite different. So let's start taking a look at some of the differences between the two pieces. I'll spend about 10 minutes on it. We'll cut this together and this will be part one and then we'll go ahead and continue on with the shaping process of the stalls. That'll be part two and then we'll jump into the tips. We're working on about uh, a three to four day total armature build. Um, not the back plate because the back plate metal has been ordered and should be here about the time I finish the stall work and the tip work, uh, and then we'll focus on that. So again, I'm looking to try to complete this prototype within the next seven to 14 days and uh, be able to start cutting the child glove metal as I'm going, as I'm succeeding in doing what I'm setting out to doing, getting confident once I finish you know, a section and I feel comfortable, then I'll go and I'll start bringing up the rear. So the next time you see all this, I'm gonna have some pipe along the uh, pipeline ready to go for the child gloves of the prototype, which will be going to uh, the next three clients awaiting their part ones or twos or whatever else they may be waiting for. I'll talk to you guys in a little while.